from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium 2019, brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media. Welcome back to MIT CDO IQ, everybody. You're watching The Cube. We go, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noises. Day one of this conference, Chief Data Officer event. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Paul Gillen. Stuart Bond is here, he's a research director at International Data Corporation, IDC. Stuart, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So, your space, data intelligence. T tell us about your swim lane. Sure, so my role at IDC is, is I follow the data integration and data intelligence software market. So, I follow all the different vendors in this market. I look at what kinds of solutions they're bringing to market, what kinds of problems they're solving, both business and technical for their clients. And so I can then report on the trends and market sizes and forecasts and such. And within that, a part of the, what, I, what I cover is everything from data integration, which is more the traditional ETL, change data capture, data movement, uh, data virtualization types of technologies, as well as what we used to call data integrity, or what I'm calling data intelligence, which is all of the it's all the metadata about the data. It's the data catalogs, it's the metadata management, it's the data lineage, it's the data quality, data profiling, master data intelligence. It's all of the data about the data and understanding, really answering what I call answering the five W's and H of data. It's the who, what, where, when, why, and how of data. So that's the, the market that I'm covering and following and that's why I'm here. Were you here this morning for Mark Ramsey's talk? Yes, I was. Talk? So, he kind of went through, you heard it, he started with EDW, kind of threw ETL under the bus a little bit, yes. MDM, and then the enterprise data model, said all oh, that failed, but that stuff's not going away. Um, and I'm, I'm sure they're, you know, Glaxo's still using, you know, all, those, all that tooling today. So, what was your reaction to that? You, were you nodding your head and, yeah, it's true, or saying, well, maybe there's a little, well, haven't we been saying the mainframe's going to go away for, yeah. for years and it's still around? So I, I think that obviously there's still those technologies out there and they're still being used. You can look at any of the major ETL vendors and there's new ones coming to the market so that it's still alive and well. There's no doubt that it's out there and it's the biggest segment of the market that I follow. So it, there's and no there's open source tooling, right? There's, yeah, there's no, there. th there's no doubt that it's still there, but Mark's vision of where things are going, where things are heading with with data intelligence really being at the core. We talked about those spiders, yeah. we talked about that central repository of information, about knowledge of the data. That's where things are heading to, whether you call it a data hub, whether you call it a data platform, not really a, a you know one big huge data platform, one big huge data repository, but one place where you can go to get the information about the data. So you can find out where the data is, you can find out what it means both the business context as well as the technical information. You can find out who's using that data, you can find out when it's being used, why it's being used and why do we even have it, and how it should be used so it's being used appropriately. So, you, you would say that his vision, what, what, actually what he implemented was visionary, he's skating to the, they, they skated to the puck, so to speak. Is yes, that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's, we're going to see more of that, we are seeing more of that. That's why we've seen such a jump in the number of vendors that are providing data cataloging solutions. I did a, a, IDC has this work product we call a market glance. I did that beginning of 2018. I just did it again in the middle of this year. And the number of vendors that offer data catalog solutions has significantly increased, like 240% increase mm. in the number of vendors that offer that. Now, it's off of a small base. These are not exhaustive studies. It may be that I didn't know about all those data catalog vendors a year and a half ago, but it may also be that people are now saying, well, we've got a data catalog, but you've really got to peel back the layers a little bit and understand what these different data catalogs are and what they're doing, because not all of them are created equal. Well, they hit your radar. If you don't know about it, you know, 99% of the world doesn't know about <laughs> it. So. Uh, Mark talked this morning about some interesting new technologies they were using, the spidering to find yes. the data, bots to classify the data, the uh, tools to wrangle the data. I mean, there's a lot of new technology being applied to this area. What, uh, which of those technologies do you think has the greatest promise right now? And, and how, you know, how, it, it, how automated can this process yeah. become? It, it's the spidering and it's the cataloging of the data. It's understanding what you've got out there. That is growing crazy. We just started to track that and it's growing a lot. That has the most promise. And, and as I said, I think that's going to be the data platform of the future 
is the intelligence knowing about where your data is so you can then go and get it. You know, it's not a matter of all the data is one place anymore, data is everywhere. Data is in hybrid cloud, it's in on-premise, it's in private cloud, it's in hosted, it's everywhere. I just did a survey, got the results back in June 2019, just a, a month ago, and the data is all over the place. And so really having that knowledge, having that intelligence about where your data is, that has the most promise. As far as the automation is concerned, the next step there, it's not just about collecting the information about where your data is, but it's actually applying the analytics, the machine learning and the artificial intelligence to that metadata collection that you've got so that you can then start to create those bots, to create those pipelines, to start to automate those tasks. We're starting to see some vendors move in that area, move in that direction, and there's a lot of promise there. You guys, I, I, at least when I remember of IDC, the software group had this pretty robust taxonomy. I'm sure it's evolved over the years. Um, so how do you sort of define your space? I'm, inter I'm interested in how big is that space, um, you know, in terms of market size and is it growing, and where do you see it going? Right, so my, my coverage of data integration and data intelligence is fairly small. It's a small little market at IDC. I'm part of a larger team that looks at data management and uh, analytics and information management, so we've got people on our team, like a, a Dan Vesett who covers the analytics, the advanced analytics, Shannon Gopal, Carl Olson, he's been on theCUBE, he covers database, database management yep. technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, those. I apologize, I don't have that number off the top of okay. my head. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, your space, really. <laughs> my, so. my space. Because yeah, that, that software market is so fragmented, yeah. and what IDC has always done well is you put people on those fragments, and you right. go deep right. in there, and so right. somehow well, you've been able to yeah. like, not make your eyes bleed when you yeah. do that, and it's, it's a so, challenging job. But, so the data integration. But you put it all together, and yeah, it's important. The data so. integration market's about six, six and a half billion dollars. So it's a substantial size. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and but again, a lot of vendors, a lot of growing vendors. number of vendors, yeah. and the market's growing. It's the the market continues to grow, as the data is becoming more distributed, more dispersed. There's a need to continue to integrate that data. There's also that need, that growing need for that data intelligence. It's not just, you know, we've had a lot of inquiries lately about data being fed into machine learning and artificial intelligence, and people realizing our data isn't clean. We have to clean up our data because we're you know, garbage in, garbage out is yeah. probably more important now than ever before because you don't have someone saying, I don't think that data is right. You've got machines that are looking at that data instead. The, the technology that's out there and the problem with data quality, it's not a new problem. It's the same problem we've had for years. A lot of the technology is there to clean that data up. And that's a part of what I, so I look at the data quality vendors, Experian is here, uh, SyncSort, you know, and, and all of the other data quality capabilities that you get from an Informatica or from a Ventaho or from a, a Click uh, through Podium, that all is, is there. And, and so that part is growing and there's a lot of more interest in that data quality and that data intelligence side again. So the right data can be used, good data can be used, the trust in that data can be increased, but used for the right reasons as well. And that's adding that context and understanding that semantic having all that metadata that goes around that data so that it can be used most appropriately. I mean, it's one of those markets that, you know, maybe relatively small, it's not a hundred billion, right. but it, it enables a lot of larger markets. So, okay, so it's six, six and a half billion, and it's growing at, is it growing single digits, double digits? It's growing, it's hovering around the double digit, double digits. It is, okay, so, so it's around, pushing 10%. 10%. Yeah. And then, and then who, who are the, you know, big players? Who's, who's driving the share? Is there a, is there a dominant player, or are there a bunch of, you know? So Informatica's number one in the market. Yeah, okay. Uh, followed by IBM, and SAP's right up there, SAS is there, Telend is making a good, uh, you know, a good, okay. uh, yeah, they're making a nice uh, um, With a headway SAS in, in, in right. size, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there, there's a number of different players, there's, other, there's a lot of different players in that market. And, and, and the leading market share player has, what, 10%, 15%, 50%, is it like a dominant? Yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot there. That's tough to, to say. You got to pull Informatic is big. It's over yeah, a billion. It, it's yeah. over a billion, yeah. Right, yeah. so they've got maybe a sixth of the market. Okay, so, but it's not like Cisco has two thirds of the networking right, no. market or no. anything like that. And what about the cloud guys? Are they participating in this? And how so do you guys deal with, with that? The, the cloud guys, yeah, the cloud guys. So there are some pure cloud solutions. There's, there's a Relteo, for example, pure cloud MDM, master data management. Uh, there, there's, I'd say there's less pure cloud 
than there used to be. But you know, but someone like an Informatica is really pushing that cloud presence and that cloud. So running these tool, these, this tooling in in the cloud, but the cloud guys directly are not competing at this point yet. No, I mean, is so, Amazon. So, 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 so Amazon, Google, yes. They, so those cloud guys, yes. Oh yeah. Okay. They they are they are Google announced Dataflow back in or, or data sorry Data Fusion back at Google Cloud. Yeah, that's Next. right. Yep. And so they're they've got an ETL tool in the cloud now. Uh, Amazon has Glue. Yeah, which right. Is, which is both a catalog and an ETL tool. Microsoft, of course, has Data Factory and Azure. So those guys are coming on, they're, and they're I'm, coming I'm on. guessing if you talk to Informatica, they said, well, they're not as robust as we are, and we've got a big install base, and we go multi-cloud, and, and is that kind of the, the posturing of the incumbents, or? It, yeah, I would, uh, that, that's, now, that's the posturing. Yes. And, 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 and I shouldn't, maybe that's, I don't mean it as a pejorative. It's, right. If I were those guys, I'd be doing the same thing, but you know, we, we were talking earlier about how the, the cloud guys essentially kill the dupe, right? right? Do you do you see the same thing happening here, or is it will the will the the tool vendors be able to stay ahead in, in your view? Depends on how they execute, and if they're there and they're available on the cloud, along with along with those cloud providers, they able they're able to provide solutions in the same the same way, the same elasticity, the same type of consumption based pricing models that the cloud vendors are offering. They can compete with that they still have better solutions than what? And multi-cloud and hybrid is a big part of their value prop. It is. That the cloud guys aren't really going hard after. I mean, they're sort of dangling their toe in the water. Some of them are anyway. And some of the cloud guys, they, they, have, the, they have the hybrid capabilities. Right. Because uh, they've got some of what, they're, what they've built comes from on-premises worlds as well. So they've got that ability to. Microsoft in particular, Microsoft right? Microsoft and yeah. Google. Uh, Google, the, yeah. the data With fusion Anthos. came out of the, um, uh, uh, you saying as part of the Anthos initiative, or um, uh, I apologize if the no, Google okay. folks are watching, but yeah, I, no, no. I've, I've Listen, it's a, it's it's a of soup of acronyms <laughs> in our business. We need to subject it is, a little bit. The, have you, what tools have you seen, or technology have you seen for making for governance of, of unstructured data that looks promising? Uh, so I don't really cover the unstructured data space that much. But what I can say is just as in the structured data world, it's about the metadata. It's about having the proper tags about that unstructured data. It's about getting the information out of that unstructured data so that it can then be governed appropriately. It's making structure out of that. That is, I, I can't really say, because I don't cover that market mm -hmm. explicitly, yeah. uh, but I think, again, it comes back to the same type of data intelligence. It's having that intelligence about that data by understanding what's in there. What advice are you giving to you know, the buyers in your community and the sellers in your community? So the buyers within the market talk a lot about the, the, the need for that data intelligence. So you know, data governance to me is, is not a technology. You can't go out and buy data governance. Data governance is an organizational discipline. Technology is a part of that, and to me the data intelligence technology is a part of that. So really, for organizations, if they really want a good handle, get a good handle on what data they have, how to use that data, how to be enabled by that data, they need to have that data intelligence. They need to go out and look for solutions that can help them pull that data intelligence out. But the other part of that is measurement. It's critical to measure, because you can't improve what you're not measuring. So it, you know that, that type of approach to, to it is critical, and you've, and you've got to be able to have people in the organization, you've got to be able to have cooperation, collaboration across the business, IT, the, the uh, chief data office, chief data officer office. You've got to have that collaboration, you've got to have accountability in, for, in order for that to really be successful. For the vendors in the space, hybrid is the new reality. Uh, in my survey data, it shows clearly that hybrid is where things are. It's not just cloud, it's not just on-premise, it's hybrid. That's where the future is. They've got to be able to have solutions that can work in that environment, that can work in that hybrid cloud ability. They've got to be able to have solutions that can be purchased and used, again, in the same sort of elastic type of method that they're able to get, the consumers are able to get services from other vendors in that same type of Great. Approach. All right, Sue, so we got to run. Thank you okay. so much for sharing your insights and, and your data. And I know we were firing, I was firing a lot of questions right. at you, and you did pretty well. With, uh, 
not having the report in front of you. I know what that's <laughs> like, so thank you for, for sharing. And, uh, and good luck with, uh, with your, your challenges in the future. You got, you got a lot of, a, a lot of uh, uh, data to collect and a lot of fast moving markets. So come back anytime and share with us your update. right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, and thank you for watching. Paul and I will be back with our next guest right after this short break from MIT CDO IQ. Right back. <laughs>